morning. Um, I think we're all getting the lurgy. Had some very disappointing hot cross buns from the co-op. They weren't great. Got down these from um, the co-op. They were reduced to 83p. Seriously spicy, hot, hot, hot cross buns. Soft and savoury with dried jalapenos, chilli peppers, bird's eye chilli powder and sweet chilli sauce. So I'm going to toast them. He doesn't usually have butter on them because he's weird. They smell quite nice. They've got three chillies on them, you know, like the heat rating. They're really like brioche feeling. They smell nice. Here you go. Oh, thanks. What have you got for me? Spicy hot, hot, hot cross buns. Have a bite. Uh, I'm not going to say they're hot, hot, hot cross buns. Oh, really? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> they look dry. They are dry. Yeah, you need but, butter on them. You know what? There's cheese on a big good burger bun. Really? Yeah. I think. Well, I can eat these. Well, I can. Are they, are they burning hot? No, no. They're just warm. You try. Can I have a bottom? I don't like tops mm. very much. They're going to be so dry. What? Because it's nice bread, it's not bad. It's the tip of your tongue. Co-op always try some uh, try weird stuff, don't they? Who? Co-op. Co-op. Yeah. They're hot. They are hot. But they're not blow your head off hot. No. It's like someone somewhere has gone. Hot cross buns. Why have they got hot cross buns? They're not even hot. Let's make them hot. That is burning my tongue. And now the roof of my mouth. Mm. It's not unpleasant though. Mm. But I won't want that for my breakfast. Bit my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Wallace looks like Bernie. Because he hasn't got any hair. <laughs> Do you believe this is a, one of the greatest um, like car train races of cinematic history whilst the grommet uh, wrong trousers the train chase <coughs> mummy's definitely getting a coffee cold oh dear. What are you doing? I don't mean coffee what am I doing I'm blowing up um, a ring for Bernie to sit in can you believe you used to fit in there yeah go and sit down if you can don't break it <laughs> Bernie's very excited to try it. <laughs> Come on. You can get up. Can you fit your bum in? Yes. Just about. Yes, I can fit it in. <laughs> I think you might just be a bit too little for it, but we'll see. <laughs> Put your legs out. I think she's, yeah, don't touch her, leave her there. But I love her, I love her really much. I know, sweetheart, I just think she's a little bit little for it still. You know when Carrie Bradshaw has that moment of panic um, in the last series of Sex and the City where she goes in her purse and she can't find her favourite necklace? That has happened to me. I'm really sad. Um, I thought I'd, when we went camping to the caravan, I thought I'd put my favourite necklace. You, you've seen it. It's like a, a hand holding a ring with a heart dropping down off it. And I thought I'd put it in my little hair grip, hair bag 
purse thing and it's gone. And I remember thinking to myself a couple of weeks ago, like, oh, I definitely packed my necklace, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, I'd have, I'd have put it in my... And I haven't. It's gone. I've left it at the caravan. And I'm absolutely gutted because I've not been contacted and my brother's not been contacted by the owner to say they've found a necklace. So I'm really sad because I absolutely loved it and I wore it every time I left the house basically not every time but if I wanted to feel pretty and finished I'd wear a necklace now this is my close second it's two hands holding but I, I, everybody always commented on that necklace how lovely it was I'm so gutted I'll probably be able to get another one but because that was quite old, I had it quite a few years, it kind of lost its shine. Do you know, like, this This is proper shiny, like, in-your-face gold. That had kind of dulled, and I loved that. I love dull gold. Oh. I'm sad. Anyway, this is from Regal Rose, if you wanted to get one. And they will have my necklace on there still, but it's really sad. It's been a really, really tough four days I think today's Friday Dan went to Ireland on Monday morning at like 2am he left to get his flight at 6 to go to Cork in Ireland um, and he got back last night at 1am so 1am Friday morning but every time he goes away <laughs> something happens to me you know single mum here and every single day there's been something um, just, and he got to Wednesday and I was like, what's going to happen tomorrow? And sure enough, something did. I went, oh, bad things coming threes. No, they don't. If you may, they're coming fours. <sighs> anyway, I've got to finish packing. We're going to, um, Granny and Grandad's for Easter weekend. It's Good Friday. Um, and it was Dan's birthday yesterday. Got my hair. Um, so I think... I'm going to hopefully take him out for a meal tonight, or at least a drink, just to have some time alone together um, for his birthday. So, anyway, I'll tell you about my horrendous week when we're in the car. Good ticket. What's that say? One evening, I always dad read a newspaper. Mr Wonka wants five children. Is it to visit his factory? He said. There are five golden tickets inside. Five chocolate bars. Find a ticket and you can visit the factory. <gasps> I, who's told you that you're going to a play park? I oh, am. Yeah. Who said that? I did. Well. well, I don't think there is one. Right. Where are we? Scarborough. Scarborough. We don't know what we're doing. Do we? So, I was going to tell you about my week. But I'm going to count down from Thursday to Monday. Because Monday was like the icing on the cake. But let's go backwards. So, in fact, I think I've got to start at the beginning, honestly. Because it's like, how could it get worse? On Monday, Dan left at about two o'clock in the morning to go to Ireland. And we had a great day at home, me and the girls. And we all snuggled up on the sofa, had a bath. Don't want to stay up late and watch a bit of telly. So we're watching Stickman. And um, Meg jumps upon the sofa and starts stroking her. And she's getting really, really friendly. Like, really friendly. You know when cats get friendly, they sort of shove their ass in your face, don't they? Oh dear! So she jumped up next to Bernie and was wiggling her bum around and I was thinking, that cat's ass is a little bit close to my daughter's head. So I just took the back of my hand and like pushed. And I'm not kidding. 
I didn't realise it had happened until it was too late. I can't believe it. Was Meg bad. must have had a lot of gas pressure or something. Mm. I looked down at Bernie after Meg had gone, and she just had these like little splatters of shit on her head. <laughs> so she must have fart shattered all over Bernie's head. So I'm screaming, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Dark, get the wipes, get the wipes. Because I'm pinning Bernie down so that she doesn't rub poo in her face. I'm not making this up, this happened. If Dan had been there, obviously I'd have taken a photo because it had a laugh my wipe on it. I mean, you were dying. Yeah. I rang him and told him and he couldn't breathe. Like, <laughs> he had to like call me back, he was laughing so hard. Um, so that was Monday, Tuesday, bottle prep machine stopped working, so that's quite stressful because I've never had to change filter myself before, Wednesday dot wet the bed, so when I got up on Thursday it was like a tsunami in a bed, and just horrific. And I nearly cancelled work because so I was like, I can't face other people today. And she was like, I don't want to go to the chair. And I was just like, right, just stay at home and be miserable then. And then I had a word with myself and I was like, do you know what? No, pull yourself together, go to work, get the kids out. So I did. Um, so I put Dot's bed in and everything in the washing machine Thursday morning. When I got home Thursday night, I opened the washing machine and I was like, oh, it's really wet. I'll put it on for a spin. Washing machine's dead. So I've had cat shit on my baby's head, broken bottom machine, wet bed to sort out, and a broken washing machine, whilst he's not here to help me. And as his mum always said, it always happens when they're not here, whenever they go away. So anyway, it's home, we fixed the washing machine. Bernie had got pink eye. <laughs> it could have been worse, could it? I did see the funny side eventually. Pink After I'd finished being raging. And uh, I did actually go on the cat rehoming website and look at the form to fill in. But decided it was too long and I couldn't be bothered, so keeping up. That is two strikes with Meg, innit? She does the third strike and she's out. I don't even care anymore. It's always to do with shit with that cat. Mm. Or pee. I'm raging. Right, I hope we're going somewhere for lunch because Mummy's hungry. Is that why you're a bit grumpy? I think so. Yeah. No, I'm grumpy because I don't know what we're doing. It's like, well, we've come here to this town on Easter Saturday. It's going to be rammed. There's going to be nowhere to park. You won't pay to park I anywhere. Will pay. Which means we'll have to walk two miles to get to wherever we I'm want not, to I'm be. I'm not bothered. It's a day out. Mm. Where's the playhouse for me? I don't think there is one. I think you've made that up. I don't know about a playhouse. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about a playhouse. Look at that lady's lovely pink hair. Daddy's sorting today out. I'm just going along for the ride. Where are we going? Don't know, you'll have to ask Daddy. Daddy? Mm -hmm. Daddy? Yes? Where are we going to get there? Oh, soon enough. Aww. Just keeping out the town centre because it is pretty really busy. Which one is it? We've gone past it, some of that. Oh, so you didn't even point it out? I was trying not to crash because of the blind corner. Oh. This is the street where Daddy grew up. This is the cycle hill that I blasted down. No, really. Please. You're not blasting down? Well, no, because the suspension's knackered and there's bad parking all around this street. I can't, there's a cat coming up in as well. Aww. So this is hell to climb <laughs> Seas over hill. there. Other side of their mouths is the best sledge in here. What? Friends, yeah. Oh, there, though. Yeah, it's more interesting than that. Oh, uh, what's going? 
Oh oh. You're gonna wave. Bye. You have to wave to everybody. Hold her up, Daddy, so she can see. You can see. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Foot down. Don't know. Wow, that's it cool. It does seem to be gathering a bit of speed. It's not really. Yeah. Oh god, look at that poor dad in that I will pay for you to go on this water shoot thing. You'd pay for me to go on So they, what, they drop down and then go back up and that's yeah, it? It just hauls you back up, I think. Do you want to roll? Metal. Don't look at the Do you get to drive the boat? Yeah, but that's his top speed, I'd say. Look at this guy over here. Look at that fireball. I think we, how much do you think that water shoot is? Probably a tenner. Right? Tenner? Five or each. Oh, you get to go to a house, do you? What is that? What does it say? <gasps> Dorothy! It's a bit, yeah, that's awesome! Sure, isn't it? Come on, we've got to go and get in the queue. Let's go and get in the queue. Come on, we don't want to miss the train. Come on, quickly. Come on, we've got to get in the queue. Come on, we're going to miss it if we don't hurry up. Oh, look at me. Huh? Take your hat off again. <laughs> <laughs> your hair's all sticking up. <laughs> oh, come on, do you want your hat anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a spider. Me? Yeah, you. Uh. <laughs> All aboard! Any minute now. Listen, that was a whistle. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah. Ready. <laughs> yes. Hey, it's going. We've got there. We're at the playground. We're only five minutes. Here we go. Two, 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 two. We need to do Tigger. Tigger. We all have to wait for it. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Here we go. Them That's open air theatre, isn't it? in the orange boat there. Yeah, little More knobbers rocking rock the boat. No, right. Oh, I think we're going through a tunnel now. Have a great time when it falls in the water. <laughs> <laughs> through the tunnel. Keep your head in. That's a great location. It's tiny, isn't it? They keep the call them seats. No, but for like if you were watching Madness or a Little Mix or whatever. Alright, yeah, yeah. Do you want to sit on this side dot? You'll see a bit more. Look at that. Oh. A bog. For the room on the broom. There could be a gruffalo in there maybe. The seaside. Oh my goodness. Not really. There we go. I love that. We did look at those rock pools. Wow. I can see all the waves and the seagulls. And the water. Lots of water, yes. The waves crashing on the rocks. What do you think that building is over there? That white one. Pointy triangle house. A kennel house. What's that building then? 
pirates. Is it that Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah. Daddy's too chicken. He's gone for a walk with Bernie. We're going on the oh, boat. Water boat slide. Boat, boat slide. <laughs> Do you think we'll get wet? Yeah. We'll have to put our hoods up. Yeah. Don't do that. Do this. You get in trouble. You'll get in trouble. Okay? Also, please don't sat down until I tell you it's safe to get out of the boat. When you're down there, those splashing and no rocking the boat. The last thing you want to do is get stuck. Oh dear. Well, do we not do that? Right, so we're ready. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah. 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 No hoods. Uh -oh. It's going. <laughs> <laughs> Wash. I want to go in the boat. Are you excited? Does anybody know how old the boat is? Oh, yeah, we do. Twelve. Ninety-two years old. Ninety-two. Not quite. Years old. Yeah. It's about the same age as the road. Hold on. Okay. Watch out. You ready? Watch. Okay. Woo! It's going. It's going. Watch, watch. Can you see, Granddad? Well, let's just see. He said if we were good. <laughs> no sats for the guy, and maybe get three girls. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, get three. No sass, yeah, no sass. No sass from me, I think. We can go. Are we ready? Oh no. Oh no! Hold on! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Oh no! We're going again! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I would have! My feet are soaked! <laughs> oh no, I'm all soggy! Oh no! <laughs> oh. Easter Bunny! Easter Bunny! My cute little bunny outfit. Spring. Oh. Dot. Where's your outfit? Come and show us your Easter t shirt. Okay, bye. Goo. What are you doing? Are you a happy girl? Daddy, look. Show me your Easter top. Give us a twirl. What's on your t shirt? And a bunny. A chicken, a bunny. Whose name's on it? Who oh, get it then? Wow! Do you want to put it over here? <gasps> Oliver, that's for you! Thanks! I'll look after it for you. Go on then, go and look for some more. Is that for you? Wow! Go on then. I wonder if I can find another Yeah, yeah, well, come here. Come this way. Look, Grandad's going to help. Thanks, Grandad. Yes. Wow. There's a little bunny rabbit as well, look. I did have one. There's more up there. Come on then. Come on, Dorothy, you're gonna have to start looking. 
What did you find? Oh, Whoa! <laughs> oh yes, it's behind you. Keep going. Keep going. What's in the trees? Yes? How can I help? Hey, what have you done? Oh, it's the most beautiful, colourful egg I've ever did see. I've done an egg. You've done one too? Oh, wow, it looks like a dinosaur egg. Dorothy. Mine looks like a dinosaur egg. Is Granny okay with this paint all over the table? Yes, it comes off your fingers easy. Because okay. she's got some on Ricardo, so I think it will come Oh, yeah. Oliver, that's awesome. Looks like a dragon egg. It's a dragon. Look, it's got fire on this side. Yes. The dragon. That's ace. And what's yours, Dorothy? A dinosaur egg. Whoa! You've got paint on your cheek. Good morning. It's eight o'clock. Come on, Dot. <sighs> Dorothy's going to the childminders. Uh -huh. <sighs> I think you're going to a play gym today, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, I think. I am, if you're good, you are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be going. I don't know which one, though. Well, so, yeah. I do you know which one I'm going to. Do you? Fizzy lizards. Oh, fizzy lizards. <laughs> you might not be. We'll have to ask them. Um. It's just starting to drizzle, so I've got a secret umbrella in my pocket. What? That's worth Mmm. Then he's got a little Halloween hat on. Because obviously all their clothing is completely out of sync with her being a winter baby and her being a summer baby. So we had a lovely weekend at Dan's mum and dad's. Um I forgot to say I got burnt. Oh. I got Bernie Wade. Well done. Can you wait by the next one? <coughs> we do this uh, waiting game, it's called. Where she runs ahead and has to wait by whatever I tell her to wait by. Well done. By the next one. So it's bin day today, so she's just waiting by each bin. <laughs> that brown lamppost made of wood. Look, brown lamp post made of wood. But I'm waiting on the bins. She's too lazy. So I have to motivate her to get grass into gear. Well done. This is quite a big hill. Um, as I was saying, yeah, got Bernie weighed a couple of weeks ago. And she was 14 pound three. So when you're carrying her, it's like... <laughs> Hello. Mmm. Um. Oh, you've got my hair. Mmm. Ouch. Mmm. my mouth. Um. Uh. Uh. You were giggling. You were. You were giggling. You're getting very good with your hands, aren't you? You're getting very good with your hands, reaching for things. And you nearly tried to roll over on Easter Sunday and you were so close. <laughs> Weren't you? You were so close. I honestly thought, I honestly thought you were going to do it. You're getting very good at using your hands. She can sit up for about 10 seconds. Which is really worrying because it's like you're only four months old this week. So what are you four months and three days? Three days. It's uh, Thursday. We came back from his mum and dad's on what day was it? Sunday. We came home Easter Sunday. And we were going to go out on Monday to the sculpture park, weren't we? But uh, Dan left my coat at his mum's. I know it's my responsibility to check I've got my own coat, but it was like, yeah, yeah, packed everything. But um, my coat and scarf was still at his mum's uh, with all my 
bank cards and bus pass and everything in it, which I need. Um, so you stayed here with me and Rosie, and Dan went with Dot to meet his mum and dad at a service station. Because we were going to go to the sculpture park, but it was chucking it down. It was chucking it down. <gasps> it was chucking it down. <laughs> you were giggling so good. I can't, honestly, every time I turn the camera on. <coughs> thanks. Every time I turn the camera on, you don't, don't giggle anymore, do you? Right, let's see if you can reach this then. What's that? Look, what's this? Can you reach? Look. Can you get it? Oh, tired. And it's a little bit early for a nap. Right? It's uh, it's only quarter past nine. Yeah, it's only quarter past nine. <laughs> Got to play for another 45 minutes. I oh, know. And then we can have a nap. Shall we see if we can do some sitting up? Yeah. Come on then. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Move that. Pop. Here we go. Let's see if we can do it. You are centred. I see. What are you looking at? Your feet. You're going to fall. No. Sit up. Head up nice and tall. Back straight. Head up tall. No. You're better when you sat on somebody's knee, aren't you? I want to do some lying down, see if you do some rolling. Um, again, very likely to I've got this horrible program on. What is it? It's Jeremy Vine, but it's not Jeremy Vine today. It's muting. Judge Rinder. Um, what was I going to say about... Alright, I voted Labour most... Probably all my life, actually. Um, but I shall not be voting Labour this time. Um, so, Conservatives put in a new childcare help scheme. Um, like, free funded hours or whatever. Um, so, currently, at the moment, if your child is under 12 months, you don't get any help. If your child is under two then you get a 20 percent top up from the government um so if your child carries 10 pounds an hour you pay eight pounds and the government top it up by two pounds to make it 10 and then three-year-olds get 30 hours which is currently what dot has um only during term time by the way so I didn't realise this, first of all, so when it gets to six-week holidays, we're going to have to pay these 30 hours, which I'm worrying about, honestly. Um, everything I've saved is going to have to go on that, which is a shame, but I suppose if she's at work, I can earn... Uh, if she's at childcare, I can work and earn more, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, so... The new government scheme that's coming in, I think some, I think some of it's already started, um, but the one for nine-month-old children isn't starting until September, and I think she's about the right time for that. Um, so the new conservative scheme for funded hours is. If your child is nine months old, they get, is it, I think it's nine, to two, nine months to two years old, they get 15 hours free childcare. 
which is fantastic. Turn time, of course. Are you can roll. Go on, you're doing it. Go on. Ah, go on. Um, <clears throat> so that's great because obviously we're not getting anything at the moment. Um, and then I believe from two years old, you get 30 hours, not this top up um, that they were doing before. And then, yeah, 30 hours again for three year olds. So it's fantastic. However, Labour have said we can't promise that we're going to uphold that thing, um, that scheme, if we win, because there aren't enough um, childcare providers, essentially. Like, they're really understaffed, they're really overstretched, there's not enough nurseries or childminders or whatever. Um, so they can't promise that they're going to be able to, you know, uphold the scheme. Which I understand, but that's not my problem. You need to pay them more, surely. Don't you? Or they need more funding or something. Like, I don't know. I just, how do you expect women to go back to work if you're not going to help us? Do you know what I mean? No wonder this country, the whole world actually, aren't having kids anymore. Oh, why would we? When we are trapped like utter shit. There was a fantastic TikTok I watched and it was this woman explaining like the economics of why why we're not in, women aren't having children anymore. And I was like, I completely understand it because you just you're just on your own. Yeah, okay, you might have a partner, but you don't have a life anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's not about getting back into work at all. We get no help whatsoever. What are we supposed to do? Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put this TikTok in if I can. Because honestly, it's it really, really hit a note with me, absolutely. Women are literally driving the human race towards extinction at the moment in the biggest case of fuck around and find out the world has ever seen by refusing to have kids because they don't like the way men treat women and they don't like the way that society treats mothers and so they're like, you know what, instead of having kids and continuing the human race, let's just go extinct. Like, let's just all go extinct. And this isn't only happening in South Korea. I don't know if you saw that report a few weeks ago that said that for the fourth year in a row, the birth rate there was dangerously low compared to the death rate. And and if that continues, you end up with loads of old people and not enough young people to support them and support the economy. And then you have fewer women in each generation and fewer of them are having kids. And then eventually you go extinct. And when they're asking women in South Korea, why are you doing this? In part, they're saying they don't like men. They don't like the way that men treat them. And they're like, why would I have a kid with this idiot? Like, why would I breed from this idiot? Why would I pass this idiot's DNA on? I don't care if you say that we're going to go in extinct. Like, I don't care if my uterus is all that stands between like us and extinction, I'm not doing it. It's not worth it for me. So I'm not going to do it. And this is happening everywhere. Like they reckon that by the year 2050, 75% of nations will be in the same situation. And by 2100, the year 2100, it'll be 97% of nations because women are refusing to have kids because we're sick of this crap. Like in my country at the moment, in Britain, the average birth rate is 1.5 children per woman and it needs to be 2.1 and it's set to plummet to 1.3 and the same thing is going to happen in the US because women just don't want to have any kids and I can see why. It's because forever we have been told that all we're good for is having children but also that that's not really that important because it still doesn't make us the default gender. It still doesn't make us the important gender. It's men who get to earn all the money and have all the fun. They're the ones who get to keep all of their leisure time. They're the ones who get to own most of the world's land and speak most of the world's words. Because we're just women and mothers and that's not that important. And so why would we do it? Like, wh why would we do it? What's the incentive here? Because women actually know that having children takes a massive toll on our physical health and our mental health and that we're then expected to live our lives in servitude to these children, to these future worker bees so that they can take care of the aging population 
and our entire lives will be changed by having a child but we're also constantly told that that's not that important but that's all we are but that's not important and so we're looking at the situation and we're like why would I do this I'd rather put a backpack on and go traveling I don't care if we go extinct like wh like why would why would I do this where's the incentive there isn't one we're not even appreciated for doing it like we're actually like brought down for doing it why would we do it why not instead just go out there and explore this world and live our lives and that's what more and more women are doing they're making the decision to do that instead so here's the thing if you don't want to go extinct you better beg us to start having kids and you better make it worth our while it's society's fault and society has been run by men for all these years and you have left us feeling underappreciated and unvalued for everything that we have to offer including having children and raising them and raising the next generation and we just don't want to do it anymore You've got to come with some. You do. Uh, gooby 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 gooby. Is it there? Uh, gooby gooby gooby. It's there. Is it here? Go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, it's been maybe three or four days since I vlogged, but um, I uh, I've come to the decision that yeah, you know I'm talking about you. That um, the cats have got to go. Um, it's just not for us anymore, unfortunately. Oh, why is he doing this? So, I know I don't really need to explain myself, but, um, I want to. So it costs us £140 every six weeks to flea and worm all the cats. And we just don't have that kind of money anymore. It's not just the money, it's like their happiness as well. Um, Herbie is the most lovely cat. Um, I'll be really sad to see him go. Um, I mean, honestly, every time I think about him not being here, I'm like, am I really doing this? Um, it's it's financial, but it's also their happiness. Like they're happy now because Bernie's sat here chilling, Dot stood in one place, watching her iPad having a breakfast. But that's not what it's like in this house anymore. And the older Bernie gets, the more loud, the more toddlery she's going to be, and they're stressed out as it is. Like Meg's not bothered, but. Obviously, with the whole baby shit on head, cat shit on baby head thing, um, it was just I can't I can't cope with it anymore. Basically, um, the stress and worry, and I hold grudges. Sorry, I know she's a cat and she didn't control or choose to do what she did, but I just don't want to be in a position where I'm like constantly worrying about a cat going near my children so anyway I've been thinking it for a really long time and I contacted a couple of um housing shelters uh, what do I mean cat shelters 
Um, but they're all full. Um, they sent me a list of other shelters they can recommend to take them. But then I was like, I don't know who's taking these cats. Like, I know they do house inspections and yada yada, but I just, I thought, do you know what? If I just put a photo... Put a post on Facebook. I don't know why I can't talk today. Then at least somebody I know is going to go to them, and I might actually get to keep in touch with them a little bit about them. Um. So I did it. I really felt terrible. I thought, oh god, what are people going to think of me? But actually, people have been really supportive. Um, because they understand what a hard decision it is to do. But I got a lot of reassurance that I am doing the right thing for us and for the cats. So, yeah, it's just awful. Every time Dot makes a sound, like the cats flinch and are like on edge and it's just not fair. And I think you've got this all to come again in six months time. Do you know what I mean? And also as well, if anything happens to them, we can't afford to have surgery on them or, you know, Meg's getting on a bit now. She's eight. So her teeth are going to start going. She's going to get more infections and just be more. She's a healthy cat, don't get me wrong. But... Oh. Um, but yeah, I just, I know it's the right thing to do for everybody. So, yeah. Like, I know I jokingly said the other day, like, oh, I feel I'll get them forms filled in. Um, and I'll get, them, you know, I'll send her off to the shelter or whatever. Um when I was in the car telling you what happened with Meg. Um, but, like, I was partly serious, like... Um, so the icing on the cake for me that's made me think, do you know what, enough's enough, is... Um, Bernie was on the floor, just, like, rolling around, having a nice time. And I, she was getting a bit fed up, so I picked her up and I put her on my chest... And I could just feel something crawling on me. And I think I think it was a flea. And I was like, I've just bloody fleed you. Why is this happening? I've had enough, so. How do you feel about the cats going? Well, they aren't gone yet. You look nice. Oh. I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Alright. Well, they aren't gone yet, so. No, you look lovely, Suze. Hmm? Yes, I know they haven't, but the decision to... Rid. Uh, I mean, the wild animals are at the end of the day. Well, I just think everyone will be happier. They won't be stressed out with small children. Yeah. Oh, no, these guys will be better off. Yeah. These guys will definitely be better off. Herb just came and, like, sat me and started pouring me and being lovely, and I was like... He knows. I know. Anyway, I was going to say we've got a couple coming to look at them today. They've got older children. I think the youngest is like eight, so. Um, and they're interested in Herb and Meg, which we'll be surprised about. But she said, the lady said, oh, you know, because Meg's a bit older, we don't want her to be left out and, we, you know, we'll take her if they get on. So I don't really know what the plan is. I know they're coming here today. In fact, they're coming here in an hour. And we're going to meet them, see what happens. But I don't actually know if they're planning to take them today. Fingers crossed it all works out. Yeah. It's going to be a great opportunity for these guys to get out of this loud house. I'm surprised nobody wants Ollie. I've not had a single message about Ollie. Um. And the problem is, I'd say, oh, well, you know, we could manage with keeping just one. But he's the one that struggles the most with... The kids, yeah. isn't he? Is so a... I, I'm happy for Meg to go because of the bum situation. Bum situation. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's just a. I'm happy for Ollie to go. Oh no. Yeah. I'm happy for Ollie to go because of the stress for him yeah. situation. And I'm happy for Herb to go because he's not a loyal cat. Like, he is not bothered for us. Like, yeah, he's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. He cuddles nice. us. Everyone the same But as he us. cuddles everybody. Yeah, and yeah. he, like, I swear to God, there, there is another household where he's getting fed and, and groomed. groomed. We've never had to brush that cat. How long have we lived here? Seven years. Yeah. We've never had to brush him. 
not once because somebody's doing it. So he's not loyal. So he's obviously not bothered for us. And mm. I don't know. Anyway, I'll update you when we know what's happening. They've just gone. Um, they stayed for about an hour and they were very lovely. Very lovely couple. Um, I did get a bit emotional. I didn't think I was going to. I thought I was going to be like, yeah, they're nice. Yeah, do you want them? <laughs> I didn't have to do much selling, honestly. The guy was totally in love with Herb. Like, you could tell he was just desperate for him to come and sit and cuddle on him. Which, he, you know, I don't know, the cats were fine with them, like, really friendly and letting them stroke them and stuff. Um, but I think they're going to have them from the sound of it. I told them to go away and think about it. Um, I don't want them to rush into anything. Um, but I think they're going to take all three, which is awesome. Um, the lady said that her mum is looking for a cat and she might like Meg. Um, because she said she felt bad separating them because they're brothers. I was like, well, they're not really fussed for each other. They're quite solitary animals. They're not, they don't cuddle up together, you know. Um, so I just don't know. But it went really well. Um, really nice couple. Their children are older. They are 8, 11 and 14, all boys. Um, and they're nice, sweet guys, apparently. Can't imagine an 8-year-old boy being... I don't know, a little bit of, a little bit rough with them maybe, but they used to dot, aren't they? So <laughs> that's what it was. That's what made me emotional was when I was talking about dot. I said, um, it's been really nice having cats for dot to grow up with a little bit. It's taught her to be gentle with animals and respectful. And that was when I got sad about them going because I was like, oh, dot might miss them. But I need to paint my nails because I'm going to start biting them. I should finish the vlog. It's very long. I hope you all had a lovely Easter. Got lots of chocolate. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Sorry, just before I go. Um, on my Facebook memories, there was a video because it's recently just been like, oh my God, can you believe lockdown started four years ago? A few years ago, it's about five, five, six years ago. I uh, was in Avenue Q, the musical. One of the best shows I've ever done, hands down. I will link down below the vlog that I did during show week. I'll take you backstage, I'll film the show from the wings, you know, show you all the puppets. Absolutely incredible. Um, but I have never actually seen myself um, performing with my puppet on stage. I played Gary Coleman. Yes, I do mean that Gary Coleman. <laughs> and um, they celebrated um, like World Theatre Day lockdown being um, a tough time for everybody by sharing a clip of the last song from the show, like the grand finale kind of thing. Um, and I got to see myself performing with my puppet like not through a mirror and I was like, whoa, I was good. Because <laughs> um, I don't think you quite realise how, how hard it is to do puppetry. Um, like the puppets weighed a ton. You, your wrist and your, your knuckles were in agony by the end of a show. Um, but yeah, it was just an incredible experience and I was so proud of my performance when I saw this clip back. Um, anyway, they shared it on Facebook so I managed to screen record it and I'm just going to finish the vlog by putting it in for you now because I was super proud of myself and yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Bye. <laughs> Why does everything have to be so hard? Ah, maybe you'll never find your purpose. A lot of people don't. But then, I don't even know why I'm alive. Well, who does, really? Everyone's a little bit unsatisfied. Everyone goes round a little empty inside.
you by the final number. Oh, Lucy, is that you? The whole new me. I was saved by the Lord. And he gave back my chastity so I'm a virgin again. <laughs> and the way before is what I wait for Scientology. Yeah! For now we're healthy. For now we're employed. Things we cannot avoid for now. For now. For now. For now. But only for now. For now. Only 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 for now.